uh, in total, we have 19 invigilators and uh, so 17 invigilators, two assistant supervisors. We also have um, um, about 12 teachers. Now these were not directly involved with the examination, but they were found especially about eight, um, four were found in a bus, you know, trying to solve the science uh, questions and then probably sent to their candidates examination hall, they were apprehended. We had another four who were in, unfortunately, a church building. Uh, answering the mathematics questions and uh, ready to send them to the candidates, they were also apprehended. We had another three who were also on a school bus who were, um, you know, answering questions to send to the candidates. So these are the the areas where we had teachers who were not directly involved with the examination, but who attempted, you know, to assist the candidates. Where do they get these questions? Uh, do they get them beforehand from your outfits or it is when the questions are um, are brought to the centers we suspect that they got these questions after the examination was started because there's one particular teacher whose uh, phone was seized and we noticed that he had a whatsapp platform and when we checked on the platform we realized that he had other teachers on it and that's how we traced and got those three who were on a bus who were answering questions uh, we'll be monitoring all the social media platforms, areas where we suspect that they will post questions. Um, there were no questions that the only ones that we saw were posted on WhatsApp. And on WhatsApp, this was mostly around 9, 10, 9, 15, thereabouts. So that is when the examination would have actively or effectively started. Is work frustrated by these events, the fact that the invigilators that have been um, deployed to the centers are the ones that are actually involved in these mock practices? Yes, it's a very frustrating and worrying situation because um, previously, if you'd, if you'd uh, indulge me, previously BEC was, uh, you know, the questions were printed by WAIC and then, you know, um, given to regional directors, district directors for the conduct of the examination. But at a point, they realized that it was not being effective. And so they asked that WAIC should, you know, take full charge and they will provide for us invigilators and supervisors. So that is what the partnership has been over the years. Now, so we think that on our part, we should be able to moderate the questions. We should be able to print. We should be able to convey all the way up to the examination center. And for us, their part of the bargain is simply to supervise and invigilate. And if they fail, obviously as a partner, we would be disappointed. I know for a fact that there are people, uh, teachers who have decided not to invigilate because they can't stand the attitude of some of their colleagues who are you know, uh, helping the children. So I believe that if there's an opportunity for us to um, independently engage, some of these people to do this job for us and of course pay them you know good money i think that yes we would be able to recruit people like that and this issue of mobile phones or communication or even bringing material to the children the examination hall will be a thing of the past for us um the director general Ghana education service is also the chairman of our board the, the, so certainly we have that relationship with him. We've had a conversation this week. He's at least had a conversation with my head of office and um, he wants to ensure that sanity prevails. And so he says that whoever, you know, is engaged in any form of infraction should be um, dealt with according to the law. When we are done, we'll send a list of these people to them again, because they are the employing agency. We hope that uh, they would also bring some sanctions against these teachers as a, uh, a form of deterring other people who may be thinking about engaging in such acts. Mm -hmm.